Hi, welcome back to Manohar Academy. In this lesson, we are going to continue our discussion about method overloading and method signatures. We don't discuss constructor overloading. Uh, also, we will just uh, touch upon a new topic called static polymorphism. It is very closely related to method overloading. Static polymorphism is basically achieved because of the method overloading. We will see all those things uh, in this lesson. So we saw what is method signature in the previous lesson, which will be defined by method name and argument list or type of the arguments. Then we saw method overloading that is being achieved by different number of arguments and uh, by having different types of arguments, also by having different uh, order for that particular arguments. They may be same, but the order is also important. So we saw all those things. Uh, this is constructor overloading. So it is similar to method overloading, but the name of the method will be same as class name. So coming to static polymorphism. So when we say polymorphic, we actually mean the ability to take many different forms. So in the previous lesson or in the slides, we have seen that the same method is able to take different forms. They have different signatures, but nonetheless, it is the same method. So because of that, we call it polymorphism. So same method taking different forms. Okay. And also we know that which method is called will be decided at the runtime. So we are going to see that uh, in a couple, in couple of minutes in the next in, in the IDE. Uh, but static, we are calling this particular polymorphism as static polymorphism because which method is called is decided at the compile time, not runtime. Sorry. Okay, it is not that in, that interesting topic, but nonetheless, I mean, if you uh, hear the word static polymorphism, I want you to understand that is achieved by method of overloading. Method is taking different forms, so we call it static polymorphism. The most the most interesting polymorphism is dynamic polymorphism. We will cover that when we discuss about inheritance. But for now, we will <laughs> we will rest with static polymorphism. Okay. Let's go to IDE. Okay, here in the main method, I am calling a max method and I am passing different number of arguments. The three methods you can see here. So whenever I am calling first one by passing two arguments, it will print method with two arguments is called. If I pass three arguments, it says three argument. If I pass four arguments, it says four arguments. So also I have another method called square. So here, if I pass integer, the integer version will be called. If I call, if I pass long, the long version is called. If I pass double, double version is called. Let me run this program. Okay, uh, the results are as expected. So now I want to prove you that it decides at the compile time which method it needs to invoke. So now let's say we don't have this method. The integer version, it is commented out. So we no longer have this one. But we are not getting a compile time error. Even though there is no method called square that takes integer argument we don't we are not getting any compilation error that is because now the compiler knows that there is a method that can accept long value so integer can be converted implicitly to long so it is not complaining and it knows that it has to call the long version that is the reason it is not giving any compilation error so let's go ahead and run it and confirm that it is calling the long version of the square okay let's even comment this particular long version. Now we have only one method called square and it is taking double argument of or argument of type double. So now also we did not get any compilation error. That is because we know that int can be converted to double implicitly and long also can be converted to double and double is double. So if I if we execute now so all these methods are invoking the same method. 
that is taking the double version of the argument okay now let's comment out this particular version and uncomment int and long versions so now if we go to our main method it knows when we pass the integer it it can call the integer version when we pass long it can call the long version but when we pass double it cannot implicitly convert this double to long or int so because of that it knows that there is no method that can be invoked by passing the double value at the compile time itself so because of that it is going to give us compilation error and also because of the various scenarios that we have seen like the same function calls deciding at compile time which method to call it can be completely different method in the first case this particular one called integer version in the second case the same method invocation called long version in the third case the same method invocation again called the double version so it is polymorphic but in this last case i mean it is a fourth case fourth scenario in the fourth scenario it is not able to find a method that can be invoked by passing the double and it is giving compilation error so understand that whenever it is trying to call a method the implicit conversion can happen it need not be single parameter if it has three parameters or three arguments all the three arguments can be implicitly converted to the required type in order to find a method if you are not sure about this uh, implicit conversions please go to youtube and you can find my video search for java type conversion okay this particular video is created by me so if you want you can watch this particular video in order to understand implicit type costing and explicit type costing okay that is all about this particular lesson last but not least if you are benefited by this video if you like this video please make sure you like this particular video and also share it with your friends so that they can watch they can learn thank you stay tuned we'll see you in the next lesson